Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Coming up, forget Starsky and Hutch, Cagney and Lacey, Crockett and Tubbs. We have our own fox shooting double act. It's Gilchrist and Lupton. Tweedledum and Tweedledee. We've got more gun dog training tips thanks to Skinner's Pet Foods. We've got new stump. We've got hunting YouTube. But first, we're after some trade secrets from ferreting aficionado Simon Whitehead. Simon Whitehead is a professional ferreter. That's part pest controller, part clown, part poet and part transportation engineer. When he's not sorting out the local rabbit population, he's writing for Shooting Times or keeping us entertained around game fair arenas across the country. Today we find him in Norfolk on a new piece of ground that needs the Whitehead touch. It's not crop damage they're worried about, it's people breaking their ankles in rabbit holes on these overspilled car parks. And he takes the job very seriously. Uh, you've got to be clinical, you've got to be single-minded and a bit selfish because all I want to do is catch these rabbits. So, you know, if it means putting 100 nets down, 200 nets down, if it means getting the dogs out, if it means shooting at night and staying here all night or trapping it, that's what I'll do to get the job done because at the end of the day we're working for a reputation and that reputation is something that will take decades and decades to build. But if you don't do your job, you'll destroy it in about 30 seconds. Joining Simon today are Digger, Torchy, Sean, Millie, and of course, Simon's patriotic ferrets. Like all working animals, they have their strengths and weaknesses. Simon chooses which ones to work, depending on the ground. Uh, but with ferrets, it's your glass half full, your glass half empty, because if we're working under roads, you don't want a ferret that's going to stay there all day with a rabbit, whereas I do here. So you tend to know the, how the ferrets work, you know, and some work, but some don't work, no matter how well they break. So you're continually having to turn over a stock to pick the best one to breed from. After a couple of cappuccinos, all media ferreters drink cappuccinos these days, didn't you know? We're caffeined up for the first assault of the day, a bank riddled with holes. Simon directs the troops. All escape routes are covered in purse nets and woe betide anyone who lets a rabbit escape. Simon does not like runners. The rabbits start popping out and some get a helping hand, with ferret still in tow. It seems to be a point about there where you press and they, they make them move the jaws open. So it's, you know, you've got to be humane with the rabbits and deal with them. And then, uh, and then sort the ferret out. Millie is supposed to be on no, Simon's side of the fence for any mopping up, but seeing all the here. funds on the other side, she gets yourself. involved. Millie's got it, Digger. She's got it. Another healthy rabbit is added to the tally, which will be about what today, Mr Whitehead? Well, I want every rabbit here, really, but I know it's not going to happen, but we're going to try. Uh, don't know. Better mind, what do you reckon, Sean? 40? Forty between thirty and forty. Yeah. And then, then you might see a white head smile. Any less, you'll see a grimace. Is that about right? I don't mind. However many we catch, the important thing is we don't they don't escape. Now we don't mention that word. No. Caught, not Sorry. escape bees. Sorry. Oh dear! Spoke too soon, and we have an escapee. Digger gets a yellow card. Simon knows, however, that nets work both ways. Back netted. It's come, come out there, slip digger, and uh, it's come down there, so. Get him out. Dispatch him. We'll have to tell digger now, we've rescinded his yellow card, so he's safe for another day. Having worked the bank, we cross to the hedge line. With so many holes, we play the numbers game, hoping to film that bunny rocketing out of the berry. This one has a quick peek and decides the other way is better. Bunny. Oops, Good bad girl. decision. Having had some bolting bunnies to start with, they now seem to be holding tight. The ferret finders work brilliantly. Simon locates the ferret, then extricates the rabbit. He is well known for his inspector gadget-like arms, reaching rabbits others fail to grasp though even he needs some extra lengths now and again. Yeah. Make sure I'm not going to try it. Let me get a stick. So uh, and that stick will go under. 
and you'll feel the fur and when you draw it out you'll have a bit of fur on your stick so you'll know there's a rabbit in there so it's your arm will reach that far with a stick you can reach that far so you just in case there's another one with a bit more digging sean offers to have a quick go at the bank but soon regrets it we lose a rabbit and he gains a golf club he's on one wall and now because he's missed a rabbit so he's got his golf club a second rabbit god forbid it we'll give him a golf ball then a tee and then if he does it four times, we'll get the membership, because he won't be ferreting. Lunchtime, and Torchy shows us his swing. Look at this. Yes. That's what happens when cousins make love. Because of the government's lack that's of care. That's the result. That's the result. See, no, what yeah. this is, care is the, the government cutback of the care in the community. Yeah. They, they'd be locked yeah. up with, yeah. like, uh, duvet yeah. wallpaper. But now we've got to take them out. Auntie Dotty and Uncle yeah. Ken, that's what yeah. happened. Really. OK, that's Sean, happened. let's leave it there. The now, we said we were going to bring you a few tips and tricks of the trade. Here's one to play with, the donk board. It's a bit like pinball for rabbits. No, no, if successful, right, it keeps the bunnies in play. Especially if we're shooting the ball and rabbits, it makes sense because we can't get a stop net through there. So the rabbits are going to feel safe. So with this board, hopefully, they run up, they hit it, goes donk. Two seconds later, we know it's going to come out. So it's going to come out that side or this side, but we're going to put a lovely great stop net or long net across the top in the bottom try and persuade them to come out and then get Millie to stretch her legs. The donk board is ideal for this hedge as netting would be a real pain. Anyway, let's give it a go. And for a bit of fun, we've put a camera on Millie. Our first rabbit does bolt but hits one of the few nets and Millie soon hits it. Batching a rabbit in a net, you want to be careful of the back claws. You can get claw through and do some serious damage to your hand. So make it quick and make sure you keep an eye on these claws because them claws they're razor sharp. They're razor sharp, they claws. Then we get a couple to give Millie something to chase. The rabbit is out in the open field and beats Millie to the fence. This is similar to baseball. It heads back down the fence, hits the donk board, knocks it over and makes a home run. The second runner follows the hedge, is turned back by the donk board, comes back again and finds a hole. So close and exciting stuff. Millie loses the camera and finally makes contact with the rabbit. It has the scars to show that it's been trying to wait it out at a stop end. So it's in a dead end. That's what's been presented to the rabbit, ferret. Let's try to get it to turn. The boys persist. Each dig delivers a rabbit. It's labour intensive, but that's the way Simon operates. For him, this is not a sport. He needs to disrupt the population dynamics of these bunnies, and that means a multi-pronged approach. On the country, people have proved it time and time again by adding ferreting, shooting, and other methods together. What you don't get with one, you're going to get with another. So it is, it, 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 it's, it's about upsetting their natural cycle, their balance, their breeding stock, their numbers. It's, it's about destroying their territory because otherwise they're just going to regroup and, and start off again. In all, we bag 31 rabbits with the ferrets. Simon's now going out with the night vision and air rifle to upset things even more. Simon Whitehead, he takes no prisoners, never plays golf and always gets his rabbit. Well, we have, of course, made lots of ferreting and lurcher type films. If you uh, can see that screen up there on YouTube and you click on it, you can go through and watch some of them. Now it's over to David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Britain News. Shooters are helping the Red Squirrel Trust in Wales. FASC has hooked up with the organisation to shoot grey squirrels in Gwynedd. The two groups already work together in Anglesey, which now contains the largest and most genetically diverse red squirrel population in Wales, with more than 500 squirrel nutkins living a grey-free life. Staying with squirrels, and there are more than 50 shades of grey. This one just outside Edinburgh is at one extreme of the spectrum. The albino squirrel has had an outing in the Daily Mail, which reported that it's called Albert. At the other end of the scale, black versions of the grey squirrel, common in East Anglia, may recolour grey squirrels permanently, according to scientists, because the black gene is dominant. George Digweed has kicked the new clay season off in style with a hard-fought win in South Africa. He won gold after a sudden-death shootout against fellow Brit Mark Marshall. 
After the win, George said that this season looks set to be one of the most hard fought ever, and he's relishing the challenge. It's bad news for duck in the USA. A state game and parks commission is expecting a population crash because duck hunter numbers are falling. From a high of more than 2 million in the 1970s, only 1.3 million duck hunting stamps, as the license is known, were sold in 2012. This means less money for conservation of waterfowl habitat. Police are investigating after a fox was attacked by hounds on a busy main road in Carmarthenshire hunt country. A passenger on a bus took this photograph and posted it anonymously to the spotted Carmarthen Facebook group. The Carmarthenshire hunt was 20 miles away at the time, with police protecting it from antis. The Zambian Hunters Organisation says it welcomes the one-year ban on hunting in the country. The Resident Hunters Association of Zambia says the ban will bring sanity to the hunting industry after what it calls a lot of confusion in the wildlife sector. And finally, Daddy O's frozen yoghurt store in Medford, New Jersey got a shock this week. A deer crashed through the window, knocked over some chairs and then crashed out again. You are now up to date with Field Sports Britain News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Now that crazy, limey shoot boy Mark Gilchrist tends to fly solo when he's out at night with a gun. But this time he's taking with him legendary ace Roy Lupton. You ever get that feeling it's going to be a long night? It doesn't start well. Low fuel in the Argo means a trip to the nearest petrol station. Then Mark starts talking about fashion and fabric conditioner. It's Billabong or something like that. Right, it's the height of fashion. Really? Like, well, where? <laughs> you've got that lovely Lenore fresh smell, and then they just get covered in Shit. something disgusting and stinks. It's so cold tonight that it's all about layers. A promising night's foxing can quickly be ruined without proper thought and consideration for one's attire. But it's amazing what a fox in your sights can do to shut out the cold. One down. Perfect shot. Ah. Perfect. That's that dog. I knew there was, well, I didn't know, I thought there'd be a dog here. There we go. One down. We're pretty exposed out here on the marshlands. With no night vision or urban light pollution, we could be on the moon. Happily, this moon has foxes. Roy gets on to another. Two foxes. Mark marks it using the latest version of his app. Every fox and rabbit we pick tonight will get logged. The date and location will not only be added to the database, but the info will also be automatically sent to the farmer. It's a shame it doesn't record size as well, as it's a big dog fox. Another dog. Well, I'm not surprised at that size. He is huge, isn't he? The farmer complained about we could hear them the other night. And I managed to miss one the other day you know, in a spot well, 800 yards from here, which is where we're going to go next. So I think we might, you know, stand a chance of getting another three or four. So onwards and upwards. Our next call produces a great response. A vixen comes charging in. She's too close for the rifle, and yet her change of position keeps her in the game. Roy is chuffed, and Mark is genuinely impressed. That vixen just would not stop. She just came steaming straight in, even shouted at her to try and stop her, but she wasn't having any of it. Um, and, and literally just passed in front of the, uh, the Argo about 15 yards off. So, uh, yeah, if we had a shotgun, we could have uh, easily dealt with her as she ran past us. But luckily, she ran past and just over the brow. We pulled the Argo back round and came just over the brow and caught sight of her again and just gave her a little bit of a squeak. And where she was so curious and obviously very hungry, yeah, she, uh, she gave us a second opportunity. But, uh, yeah, brilliant, absolutely brilliant, especially with the white light. I mean, I, I love going out with the, the night vision um, and it's nice going out with the red filter, but when you've got foxes that are, are not lampshire whatsoever and they're coming in when you've got the white light out, you just can't beat it because you just see so much more. <laughs> I, was, I, I, I as soon as you put it in your mouth, I thought, oh, it's sort of, uh, 
you know. Well, I mean, you get more toys than me, so you know, I, I, and I, I, I'm not, I don't want to come across all jealous, but I thought, another gimmick. Um, but no, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with it. Midnight comes and goes. It takes a while before our next fox, but it's another nice one. And now it's surely time to call it a night. Should we see if there's any more on the way back? Oh yeah, we're not letting David go to bed. No, that's it. I mean, he is <coughs> bleating on though, isn't he? Oh, it's, it's, it's childish. I know. It, I want to go home. You're in it's the wrong night. job. You're in the wrong job. <laughs> I want to work in an office. <laughs> at ITV, we clocked off at five o'clock. <laughs> I need a tea break. My bottom hurts. <laughs> Can I <have> a sandwich? <laughs> Come on, David. David has asked for it to be known that Gilchrist finally dragged himself out of his pit the following day at 11 a.m when Roy phoned him. Roy was crying inside the whole time and they had a proper seat with leg room. Right, on with the film. And well, that's where it pretty much ends. Four foxes on the deck with some cracking shooting from Roy. Gilchrist taking out a few extra bunnies with his night vision when the opportunity presents itself. Good night, really. There's, um, there's a few more we're gonna have to come back and get another time that just wouldn't play the game. Um, I think we need to get a rest and there's a couple of chaps there, you just need to go up and bang. No, there's definitely a few more foxes out there to go and play with, isn't there? So, as I say, I mean, there's one or two there that are a bit lamp shy, but we'll uh, we'll get the night vision set up for those and hopefully account for those without too much bother. And I'm absolutely bloody frozen. Let's get home. Didn't they do well? And if you want to see more foxing films, click on the screen up there behind me. Now we're off to look at some kits with Kit Special. <laughs> Kit Special this week looks again at sporting guns that we love the most. Here's a quick review of the second-hand guns on the new website gunsdirect.co.uk that its users have viewed most often. Starting with full-bore rifles, and it's not the rifle so much as the price. It's a Parker Hale in 243 screw cut for moderator for just £200. Founded in 1880 on the promise of delivering more accurate rifles, Parker Hale was, for much of the 20th century, a mighty of the Birmingham gun trade. Most popular shotgun is £150 AYA. The Spanish-made box-lock non-ejector with 28-inch barrels is choked three-quarters and a quarter. There was a time when the Birmingham gun trade blamed Spain for its decline. Top air gun choice on gunsdirect.co.uk is, like last week, a BSA Mercury in 2.2 for £145. BSA, one of the titans of the Birmingham trade alongside Parker Hale, is now owned by Spanish company Gamo. Aha! Or, as they say in Birmingham these days, ole! That's it. Feast your eyes, fish into your pockets. Thanks for watching. This is Kit Special. From hardware to our furry friends, we're learning gun dog training tips thanks to the experts, sponsored by Skinner's Pet Foods, makers of the Field and Trial range of dog food. A pheasant gets up, the shot goes off, the bird is down, your dog completes a perfect retrieve, but then it all goes wrong. How much displeasure should you show to a dog? Spaniel Mickey decided that he was going to help him with his lord, and unfortunately went to grab it. Den, being the sensitive dog that he is, gave it up very, very easily. It's not what I wanted, because I've got a wounded bird, I want it back quick, I don't want dogs mouthing it. So as a result, Mickey got a ticking off. He's quite a sensitive dog. Uh, you tailor your ticking off to the dog. Some dogs need a firm hand, some dogs a growl will be more than enough. So the art in training a dog is knowing what type of dog you've got and what level of pressure it requires. Too much pressure and you'll get the dog worried. Not enough pressure and you're always ticking the dog off. Now I would say that it looked like Mickey had a really big ticking off there from, from the outside. So that's not, that's not a big ticking off particularly. The question is, if it's a serious ticking off, the dog is worried when off you go again. If you can see in the video, Mickey then hunts on quite happily afterwards. So actually, hopefully it's lesson learned, but I haven't squashed his drive or enthusiasm. I've got him that upset. And then a little bit later on, a bit like a naughty child, you gave him a treat. I gave him his retrieve. Thing is, he worked hard all morning, 
in what the other dogs have in retrieves. He's a capable retriever. Uh, so I wanted, f for f the reward for his efforts was nice straightforward little pheasants that he went out, picked and brought nicely to hand. Ricky Milady runs Ribblesdale Labradors. This series on gun dog training tips is brought to you by Skinner's Pet Foods, maker of the field and trial range of gun dog feeds. Visit skinnerspetfoods.co.uk. From dogs to all kinds of hunting on YouTube, it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting, shooting and fishing videos that YouTube has to offer. Viewer Leif Mearns contacts us from Australia to recommend a video by Ben Smith that he says speaks for itself and embodies what most Australian hunters experience. He's bang on there. Outback Hunting Trip 2012 to 2013, Pigs and Goats is a cracker. Thank you, Leif. Back to the old country, the decoy boys, two friends in the northeast of Ireland, County Monaghan and County Louth, are out in this film at the end of the pheasant season with a red setter. Staying in Erin, James McKiernan of Country Sports Cavern Centre in his latest film showing crows, jackdaws and sheep and revealing that he isn't actually allowed to shoot here. But he is proud of his new scope cam, so that's all right then. He says he is not going to put up another film until we feature this one in Hunting YouTube. So here it is. Fishing in Iceland, what better company than the remarkable entrepreneur, angler and environmentalist Ori Vigfussen. Icelandic Angling Club by Fish Berserk takes us to his four rivers. Once again, forgive the accent, the Sela, Hofsa, Fljot Aa and Laksa in Adaldala. Now we're off to the USA for T N Wildside, PJ's first fish. This is a story about a little boy who gets a surprise on a summer morning. It takes just a few minutes, but it may change his life, and his parents say it may change theirs too. Wildside guide Craig Owensby takes us there. Shotgun impacts in slow motion by the slow-mo guys is the result of one of their subscribers who wanted to see slow motion clay pigeon shooting. With the help of Barry the farmer and his shotgun, it is amazing to see the spread of the lead shot and the speed that it moves, even in slow motion. And it is a shocking waste of fruit. More arty stuff here. Jan Renard from Belgium sends in a Dutch documentary about shooting shot in HD at 7,000 images per second. Field Sports Channel generally manages the best of 5,000 FPS. It's only a trailer for a longer documentary, but it's beautiful. Finally, viewer Angel Sancho recommends his own film, which he calls a nice video about hunting without guns. We are in Spain hunting Perdices Rojas, red-legged partridges, with a Halcón Peregrino, peregrine falcon, and an Azor, a goshawk. You can click on any of these films to watch them. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Another film you could watch is the latest in our new series, Schools Challenge TV. This week it takes a look at Schools Challenge events coming up in 2013. And there is a feature on clay pigeons, clay pigeon traps and the technology behind them. It is a YouTube show alongside shows such as Top Gear and there is a link to it on this screen. Well, we are back next week. And if you're watching this on YouTube, don't hesitate to hit the subscribe button that's somewhere around the outside of the screen or go to our webpage, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can click to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter or scroll down to the bottom of the page and pop your email address into our constant contact form. And we'll be in touch with you every week about our show that's at 7pm UK time on Wednesdays. This has been Field Sports Britain.